And under that, next. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So under under area research area number two, we are looking at post harvest management. And post harvest management here was supposed supporting farmers on the on the, on the small scale um, 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 storage techniques training farmers on the small scale storage techniques and these techniques basically that they cannot use pesticides so that they can store without using pesticides and these are the simple technologies we all know on the airtight bags on using the, the, the drums that they are no matter viable at the, at, the, at the homestead so these are locally materials that they can use so that they can be able to store their produce without using chemicals. But also in the area of processing, we were like um, um, identifying the farmers that have or they want to do processing, agri processing of different kind of things. And these farmers are trained, trained on the on the business aspect, uh, but also trained on the areas like if you want to do to do. Uh, bakery. So they have been trained in passing through the whole process of training, coaching, and mentorship under that specific area. But also some of them are, we have now good processors that are doing, are doing milling processing. So they do, they collect from the farmers, they pack, they, they process, they pack, they sell, they sell flour, they sell nutritious flowers. So we have this different kind of processors under, under this component. But also in the area of commercialization, uh, these are the, the development and strengthening of short supply chain. And here we will, um, what we did is basically is to build the capacity of the farmers themselves to be able to do the marketing by themselves. Now we are not like we are looking for the market for the farmers, no, but we are building capacity of the farmers, the farmer groups, to be able to negotiate, to be able to do the research of the market. So we call it we call it a participatory market research. So they went to the to the buyers, they negotiate, they do research, they come back to the groups, they share that information they got with the groups and now they now decide if they want to sell or within a certain to a certain buyer or not. If they say oh no, maybe in the certain market there is a different price, we can just go for that. So we give them that power to, 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 to negotiate. So we have this uh, committee uh, with different groups. Yeah. Yeah. Next is the favorable and political environment. Um, so before that, we and uh, the marketing component as well, we also um, established the, we call it the farmers market. These are the centers where the farmers can bring their produce direct to the market and meet the buyers direct. So that was also another another component. Now, in the favorable political environment, this uh, is the area of the advocacy. So empowering farmers to be able to, to, to do the research of their program, problems and be able to analyze the, the to analyze the, the, the problems that is around and to know where to take these problems. Either if it is the district and uh, officials, they can take it to the district officials. So it was just one way of doing their advocacy or lobbying to the farmers. But also we are also concentrating on the advocacy of the favorable environment for the for the local seeds. As we all know here in Tanzania that uh, still the, the local seeds are not recognized by law. So we are working with the other partners under that component to to really mobilize, to, to really give evidence, to work together, or to, to explain 
because farmers so that they can be a lobby and an advocate for that for that component. Yeah, but also other things we are also organizing some some conferences. We are organizing the fairs. We had the seed fair. We call it the seed fair where the farmers can come, demonstrate, showcase, and give the advocacy messages to the to the relevant officials on the issues of, of local local or farmer managed seed. Yeah. Uh, we are also uh, now uh, as IEP together with ECO, we are also co-organizing what we call ACAF, the Arusha uh, Collaborators for Agroecology Forum, which is happening at least three times, three times a year. Yeah, so we are really co-organizing and we are really active in that. But we are also we are also working or organizing different cooking demonstrations. Because okay, when you are working for the local seed, people have to consume food so that this to create the demand for the seed. So we are really uh, key in advocating or in sensitizing, mobilizing consumers citizens to be able to look for food that is health, that is safe, and that is local for their, of course, for their body. So we are in them doing cooking demonstrations in the villages, cooking demonstrations in every event we are going, we are in organizing these different kinds of cooking demonstrations. And these cooking demonstrations, they go hand in hand with the nutritional trainings. So we have a nutrition officer who is also training now on the nutritional aspects of these foods, but also the way of cooking this food, because you know you can cook a food and destroy all the, the nutrients. So they really go hand in hand in nutrition education. Yeah. Now some of the results. Some of the results. We were really happy and we 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 got the uh, to be evaluated by FAO. They did as a pilot when they were piloting the, the tape tool. I think Abraham talked about it on the tape tool. This is the tool that is assessing the 10 elements of agroecology. And our farmers during the fourth year of the program were able to be analyzed and see how are they now in these aspects now of 10 elements. And this, this assessment were done by, of course, they were looking at the farmers and the, and the farmers that were in the program and the farmers that were not in the program were the control. So we had the beneficiaries in the control. And you can see the, the, red, the red line is for the control and the green, the blue line is for the beneficiaries of the program. So it, is, it was really, yeah, evidence that in all the elements, the, the farmers that are in the program were a bit better compared to the farmers that are not in the program. Of course, this assessment, they didn't assess on the, you cannot see the trajectory that, okay, maybe from this year to this year, what are the improvements? But at least for the first time, it shows the picture of the difference between the farmers that are, that are applying the agroecological principles versus the farmers that are not applying the agroecological principles. And you, yeah, you can see, okay, the, and out of this now, we have in our other program, because we also have a new program now that is here in Arusha, we are now incorporated the tape tool in all our MND systems. That okay from the baseline now we were really assessing, we are now assessing our farmers from the baseline that regarding all these 10 elements. Then after some time we'll go and assess again, and after some time we'll go and assess again. And we think okay, in future it will give us a very big and nice and good picture to show the improvement and the performance of course of this tape tool. And these are some of the results, as you can see, uh, that color is, uh, is for the beneficiaries and the yellow color is for the control. And that is the farm resource. So when they are assessing on the resource,
resources the farm they are having, the beneficiaries were far above than the, than the control, the non beneficiaries. Yeah, but also the household needs, yeah, this household, household needs, they were looking at the, 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 what they are having for the food, for cash, or for, the, for doing other, other activities. You can see also the difference between the, the, the beneficiaries and the non, the non beneficiaries. Women empowerment, as you all know, that is also key under the elements of agroecology. You can find like the farmers that are engaged in the program, they are really more, more empowered. And say more empowered in terms of decisions, in terms of control, in terms of taking some powers in different areas. Yeah, so there have been uh, uh, good results. Of course, dietary, dietary diversity, the dietary score. This is really obvious related to the to the crop diversification. It has a direct relationship with the dietary also diversity, and you can see these are two different results. Yeah, thank you for the first part. Now, my colleague will also go on. Now, what were the success factors? What did we learn out of that? What were the good things we learned? But what, what were the challenges that we faced? Because not everything that went smooth. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So, yeah, as I said, I said, we focus more on the, what we consider the success factors but also the challenges we face and maybe the kind of solution we try to, to, to mitigate these challenges. So the first uh, success factor is really related to what I has said. Because we adopted really this holistic approach of the food system. So we intervene or we try to intervene in different segments of the food system. So we did not focus only on production but we look at the different segments of post-production, distribution, marketing, uh, political and social environment. And this is key. I mean, Abraham was saying that food system and agroecology are complex. It's true. But if you want to address a complex problem, you have also to come with a complex solution or approach. So we clearly think that by working on different components, it allows us to achieve uh, these results in terms of uh, uh, transformation of food system. And we just give one example. We discussed when we did the first assessment with farmers, many of the farmers were saying, my farm I have two plots. One, I grow local varieties of maize, I don't, don't put any chemicals, and this is for my own consumption. I have another plot where I grow hybrid maize, Obviously, he has to use all this chemical package. And we were a bit surprised. And we asked him, but why? First, he said, because I know that local varieties and organic way of farming is better for the environment and for my health. And we said, yeah, but I mean, you are keeping this good food for you and you don't share with the consumers. He said, yeah, but the problem is consumers, they want this actually maize. This is what they want. If I bring my local maize in the market, at the end of the day, I will come back with it at my own place. So just to, to, to show that working on production is not enough, you have also to work on the other side, you have to work with consumers, try to change the consumption habit. This is one example, but we can try to link all this uh, component of the food system and to show that if we intervene on this component, it has an impact on the other one, but all these components of the food system are interlinked. So there is really a multi-entry point we need to use to make sure that we initiate this food system transformation. So, again, according to us, it was one of the uh, success factors of this, of this project. Another one is as you can explain this agricultural diversification in the farming system. So she showed with the result that agricultural diversification has an impact on food and nutrition security at farm level, but it has also an impact on income. So farmers have more products and different type of products to sell, and also because we combine food and cash crops of 
food and cash livestock. So it was also a, a, an important strategy, so not only to focus on consumption at the farmer level, but to see, okay, how do we uh, generate uh, more income uh, for the farmers? I mean, farmers are like all of us, they are also looking for money. Money is also a key driver uh, in an adoption of these agroecological practices. So this is not only philosophy, we need to get money out of it. Uh, so that's why combining food and cash, crop and livestock was also according to us uh, and, uh, a success factor of this, uh, of this project. Mm -hmm. The second point, oh, sorry, we just come back. Uh, when we say dual focus on shifting practices and developing more marketing, it's really related to what I mentioned first, this holistic approach of the food system. Mm -hmm. So of course, if you work on production, you need also to work on conception and marketing just to make sure that, okay, what you produce, find also a market. And the last one, and not the last one on this slide, is access to microfinance. We know that access to finance for small scale farmers is a big and really big issue. While they need access to capital to start this agroecological transition, uh, yeah, when we want to engage in this transition, it requires some uh, uh, resources. So access to capital was also uh, a big challenge. By putting in place what we call VICOBA, this uh, village community bank uh, at group level, farmer groups level, mm -hmm. it helped, of course, first farmers to access finance, but it also strengthened the, the, the dynamic of the group. Mm -hmm. Agroecology is also about social dynamics. Mm -hmm. And when putting in place this VICOBA at farmer group level, it also helps to dynamize and to strengthen the cohesion of the group. So it was also for us an important uh, success factor. Another success factor that we identified is also the importance of promoting what we call quick wins. So we know agroecological transition is a long process. If we really want to see the benefit of agroecological transition on your farm or at food system level, we know that we have to wait. If you talk about soil fertility, if you start uh, restoring your land, you need a couple of years to really see the effect on your soil fertility. So there is a need if really we want farmers to be engaged and to sustain their commitment in this agroecological transition, we need to have quick wins. And for example, so we introduced this uh, poultry uh, uh, component. So we know poultry on a short-term basis can provide food and can provide income. So it's all these small uh, components, these quick wins that can, can keep uh, farmers committed in this agroecological transition. Another success factor is what we call uh, uh, gradual introduction of techniques and technology at farm level. We turn it now as a success factor. To be honest, at the beginning it was a mistake from our side. Mm -hmm. Mistake because we wanted the farmer to adopt all the techniques. Mm -hmm. So we came first with multiple, multiple, multiple techniques and technology. And so okay, you have to do all of this. And of course, it created some confusion. Uh, we know that, yeah, I mean, agroecology is a knowledge intensive. You cannot master all these techniques and technology at once. So of course, you have to go step by step. I mean, I think for all of you, or most of you, it's not something new. But we generally do this mistake because we want the farmers from today to tomorrow to, to really fully engage in a, this agroecological transition without considering that it's a transition process, it's a step-by-step -step process, and we need time. Next one. Um, yeah, in terms of success factor, it's also collaboration. And it's really part of the uh, so agroecological concept. You know, we are talking about synergies, collaboration. And for us, it was also very important to involve uh, other partners. As I mentioned in our introduction, a couple of partners we work with. If you want to work on food system transformation, as we say, it's complex, you cannot do it alone. We need really to have the right partners with the right skills to work together with the same goal and uh, each partner providing his own uh, expertise. Mm -hmm. So we will mention a few during this presentation, the 
that we had much more collaboration and synergy with other partners, and for us it was really key. And uh, yeah, I mean, the second success factor is what we call farmer to farmer knowledge sharing. It's also this idea of agroecology, and we have really this idea of linking farmers to farmers. We always think that uh, you know, these extension officers coming from university with this big knowledge know more than a farmer. It's not true. First, it's not true. And secondly, a farmer trusts a farmer more than an extension officer. So we try as much as possible to link uh, and to engage farmers, or we call them lead farmers or super farmers, who were actually extension officers. So training, coaching, and working together with their fellow farmers at village level or even in neighboring villages. Now, some challenges. There are challenges into our project, but we can also consider these challenges more globally. So there are some conflicting messages. So our project promoting agroecological transition. At the same time, other stakeholders, sometimes government, so extension officers, these private companies, this company or fertilizer company, coming with another message. So of course it creates some confusion in the farmer mindset. You know, so you go and you promote agroecological transition, organic farming. On the other side, uh, this uh, seed company coming promoting hybrid seeds with chemicals. So it creates, of course, uh, a, a kind of confusion at farmer level. How did we mitigate this? We had really an intensive capacity building of small scale farmers. So meaning that every week our field team work with farmers in the field. So we created this trust between the project and the farmer. And we implemented this demonstration plot. So farmer can see and testify that all these techniques and technology are working. So it was really to develop, yeah, again, this kind of trust uh, between the project and the, and the, and the farmer. Another challenge is the lack of cross-cutting policy and coordination. So we know food system touches different uh, uh, components. It's part of agriculture, it's part of nutrition, it's part of health, it's part of trade. But in Tanzania, there is no unique policy or strategy saying how can we support this agroecological transition considering all this component of the food system. So meaning that at some point the Ministry of Agriculture is taking the, the lead of why there is an important component of nutrition or health, but they don't collaborate each other. So there is always a bit of, and we mentioned lack of coordination as well. Um, we can see that there are quite a lot of initiatives supporting agroecological transition in Tanzania. Small ones, but there are quite many. The problem, they don't have enough visibility because of lack of coordination between all the actors uh, promoting a ecological transition. So we need, we need to reinforce this dynamic and this movement of agroecological transition and to be able to speak out and to uh, generate and to share evidence uh, from the field. Another challenge, I mean, I mentioned a bit already, is extension officers from the government. First, there are quite few. So usually, I mean, at least in Karatu, we have one extension officer to supervise one, two, or three villages. So you can imagine one guy supporting thousands of farmers is impossible. And secondly, most of them, they have this conventional agricultural background. So they don't really have the skills on agroecological transition. So this is also, of course, a big challenge. How do we mitigate it? So in all the villages we were working with, so we mentioned 18 villages, so we did also a capacity building process to this uh, extension officer. So they were very part of the project. To be honest, at the beginning, most of them were very reluctant about this agroecological transition approach. I don't say that we convinced all of them, but I must say that most of them are now more engaged in agroecological transition. Another challenge is about this uh, lack of agroecological markets. 
So I guess you guys have a presentation, you mentioned that we are, we were working on promoting farmers' markets uh, to link more farmers and consumers. So we did it at small scale. This should be done really at larger scale, just to make sure that the production finds market. So it's still a big challenge. We still have to work on it, just to make sure that uh, farmers find places where they can sell their product, and that their product is a value for what it is, for safe, local and nutritious food. So this is also a, a big concern, that's why now we are starting also working on this uh, participatory guarantee system that uh, certifies the, 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 the product. And uh, yeah, one of the challenges is the question of land availability and ownership. I mean, many parts of Tanzania owning land it's a big problem, so when you are not the owner of the land, of course, maybe you are a bit reluctant to invest in your land to restore soil. So it can be also a limiting factor for agroecological transition. Uh, so two last uh, challenges, like many actually. Uh, so, so the, the problem is small and medium enterprises. We know that the private sector can play a crucial role in the food system transformation. So sometimes we have the tendency to put, well, they are still using their traditional way of farming and adopting slowly these conventional practices. So this is the right time to, to, to support them to go for these agroecological transition practices. So, but we see, I mean, we can testify that many or a lot of farmers we are working with were really committed in this agroecological transition. This we mentioned already, but yeah, general public, so meaning citizens and consumers, uh, sensitization is really an important thing to uh, support uh, food system transformation. Then also, we mentioned it, but it's good to repeat that private sector play really an important role in this uh, transition process. So we should not forget them when uh, implementing this kind of project. We have some figures. But SMEs contribute to 95% of all businesses in Tanzania. So we are really at the heart of the food system. And uh, the small figure, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they create 35% of the GDP at national level. So, so very high. And again, <coughs> by working, I mean, if this uh, SMEs start uh, an agroecological transition of their business, it will benefit farmers and it will benefit consumers. So we need to have a focus also on, uh, on this SME. <coughs> and so the last lesson learned, but this is what we say more in the introduction, but if we want to transform the food system, we need to use different entry points. So in production, in consumption, also working on this social and political environment, just to make sure that there is around this dynamic of uh, food system transformation using agroecological principles. Thank you.